The River Thames in Fulham. When the tide goes out, it reveals a dirty secret. This is where tons and tons of plastic gets dumped by the river. And why here? Why does it end up here? So because uh, the river has a, obviously a bend in it here, it's depositing. So as the slow movement of the river uh, acts on the inside bend, it deposits down onto the foreshore here. Large bits like this also break down into tiny fragments called microplastics. Researchers say the Thames has the most of any river in the world. One of the concerns is obviously the fish are swimming along. They're then, you know, absorbing these microplastics and other animals are eating products that have microplastics in them. And then the public population are eating the fish, eating meat that has microplastics and it's now getting into our bloodstream as well. In Elizabethan times, salmon abounded here. In 1957, the Thames was declared biologically dead. Since then, it has recovered. 125 fish species have been recorded in its waters. Now, though, the issue is plastic. It's low tide here at the moment at Fulham, and the amount of plastic here is absolutely shocking, actually. There's everything here from cable ties to sunglasses to razors. 200 tonnes of plastic is pulled out of the Thames every year. 80% of it is single use. So this is a um, female mitten crab, you can tell by the broad abdomen on the underside. This crab was caught next to Hammersmith Bridge. At the Royal Holloway University, they've been studying crabs from the Thames for 10 years. The vast majority of the fibres we find are often quite clear, clear class, uh, plastic fibres. Some of those almost certainly would have come from the breakdown of wet wipes. This one had tiny fibres of plastic inside, which the crab had eaten. And previously, this is what other experiments found, tangles of fibres inside crabs. Cutting off plastic at source, where it's getting into the environment, is far more effective than trying to clean it up with once it's in the environment, you, you can clean up the bigger stuff, but microplastics, you, it's virtually impossible to get them out of the environment once they're there. So it's much more effective to try and cut off that plastic getting into the environment in the first place. So a big part of that is trying to encourage people to change their behaviour. Charities think tougher legislation is also needed. We'd like to see the government introducing a ban on plastics in wet wipes um, and obviously we could do more to eliminate single-use plastics. Manufacturers need to be careful with their packaging and their wording, you know, also they could use products that aren't required of single-use plastics, things that can be recycled. The Thames is meant to be London's jewel. At the moment, it's a dumping ground for plastic. Tom Edwards, BBC London.